Hi, I'm Dr. Andre Kumar. This is the Stanford 25 ultrasound series. In this video, we'll be discussing right upper quadrant ultrasound and the gallbladder. When you think about right upper quadrant ultrasound from a POCUS perspective, there are several indications that it's quite good at evaluating. These include cholelithiasis, cholecystitis, as well as very large hepatic abscesses. Things that it's a little bit less reliable at include evaluations of biliary tree pathology, including dilation, stones in the bile duct, determination of cirrhosis, as well as vascular malformations. When I think about doing a right upper quadrant ultrasound, there are several probes you can use. You can use either a phased array probe or a curvilinear probe. A phased array probe has a smaller footprint between ribs, which allows for easier visualization. A curvilinear is much larger, so it has greater depth, greater penetration, and it allows you to see the entire organ pretty easily. For this particular exam, we'll use a phase array probe. By convention, you want your dot on the left side of the screen for any abdominal imaging. You also want to set your device to abdominal mode for optimal gain, depth, and frame rate. I'm going ahead and scan my patient. You'll want them lying completely flat in the hospital bed. If their bed is a little bit raised at the head, you just want to lower it all the way. I'm going ahead and put my gel on. For right upper quadrant ultrasound, there's several landmarks you want to just be aware of. These include the xiphoid process, the costal margin, as well as the anterior axillary line. How I'm placing my probe, so I have my marker right here on the probe, I'm placing it up towards the patient's chin or head. You'll generally want to take an angle that's a little bit below the costal margin, so it's important to know several landmarks. You're going to want to identify the xiphoid process, the costal margin, and the anterior axillary line. Generally, you're going to place the probe about one-third of the way from the xiphoid process to the anterior axillary line, so right about in this area. You'll want to have a, the probe slightly pointed uh, towards the patient's head. The gallbladder tends to be a very superficial structure, and so you may need to adjust your depth as you're scanning. Right in the middle here, we can see uh, the gallbladder, and you can practice fanning and rocking back and forth to center it as well as to scan along its entire length. If you want to get a cross-sectional view of the gallbladder, you can also turn your probe. So rather than this marker being pointed towards the patient's chin, you can actually turn it at a 90 degrees so it is now pointed towards a 3 o'clock position to see a different section of the gallbladder. Even with all of this, the gallbladder may be difficult to view. And that might be because the patient has eaten in the last two hours. Ideally, you should try to wait a little bit longer than then before performing this examination. If you're having difficulty viewing the gallbladder, another trick you can do is have the patient take a deep breath in. So go ahead and inhale and hold it. By inhaling, this allows the gallbladder to come into view as it's pushed down more into the abdominal cavity. Go ahead and breathe out. Another uh, thing with troubleshooting is I often see trainees pointing their probe too perpendicular. You have to imagine what this beam is pointing towards. So if you point perpendicular towards this, you may not be able to see the gallbladder, which sits a little bit higher in the abdominal cavity. So be sure to drop your probe as you scan.